Okay, so good evening, everybody. I think I can say evening now. It's 10 past five. That kind of works. Thank you for coming to the last session of the day. You have made it through. For our last session, we have Tiger, L Tiger <laughs> Livermore. Yeah, actually. Did I, did I do a nice translation of that? Yes, question? exactly. <laughs> Tech evangelist and dev uh, developer advocate, and he's going to be talking to us today about building a real-time event-driven Java system yes. in Azure. Take yeah, it away. thank you a lot. Thank you for the intro. I think uh, yeah, we lost half of the audience now because the last session everybody is tired, right? Uh, yeah, Tiger Livermore is uh, Bob Rumorzok, just uh, uh, in my in my language, I would say. Uh, so. Hi everyone again, once again, I'm super excited to be here. Um, so today in this session, we're gonna learn about, uh, some people joining, how, how to build Java-based serverless solutions uh, using the power of event-driven computing, uh, like uh, Azure functions that ingest the stream of data and processes data and writes the result back to the backend database. It's also even driven, uh, like we call it Azure Cosmos DB in real time. Uh, if you also attended the previous session uh, by Chris, uh, what he showed with the even driven database models, right? And uh, this is actually the next level. Uh, how, okay, we have some concepts, some best practices, how to uh, do some real project. This is actually a covered Z one. A little bit short about me, I'm a developer advocate for uh, some of the open source projects and the Apache Software Foundation also for the Java on Azure inside Microsoft. Uh, and first things first, and maybe I like to do uh, some pictures, maybe if you don't mind, we will do this quickly selfie and then we can go, okay. Uh, I think this part is better, smiles, so one, two, three. This angle, one, two, three, and it's good. Yeah, thank you. Now I can go home uh, because yeah, my, my job is done, right? <laughs> but actually not. Uh, I'm here to uh, give you some knowledge because uh, we, we are here to learn something new, right? Uh, but before we get started, uh, my question is, how many of you here Java developers? Oh, yes. Yes, we are, we are many of, because if you are uh, not Java developer, sorry, this is not for you, I'm just joking. Uh, not, not, actually, it's, uh, Java is just a language, right? You can replace to a Python or .NET and to your favorite language uh, if you would like to work with Azure. And next question may be, how many of you are uh, using Azure or Oh, you're using Azure. Oh, yeah, we have good, very good. In this case, it will be, this session will be very easy for you. Uh, here's the agenda, as you can see for today. I will start quickly. Uh, it's a hot topic because Java on Azure is very hot. It's new. Uh, you are lucky today because uh, you are hearing uh, first in Baltic countries uh, the Java on Azure, uh, how to say, the conference webinar. Uh, we will start with uh, talking about uh, recent Microsoft investments in uh, Java and what are the Microsoft teams are doing to uh, help Java developers to succeed uh, on Azure, right? And we also learn how to build Java serverless APIs instead of uh, microservices uh, by simply using Azure functions. And we will uh, look at the sim uh, simple even driven components uh, uh, later on the slides, and we'll uh, see how to scale them, and uh, we will also leverage event hub trigger extension of Azure function uh, to uh, process some events. And I will also show you how you can monitor even driven system in this session. Also, we're going to enable uh, a CI/CD pipeline by using GitHub Actions. It's everything. Yeah, everything Microsoft products here uh, mentioned it. Uh, so let's go. As you can see, like as the Java ecosystem has changed a lot for several years, right? Uh, and because we moved from Java monoliths, e applications that's running on application servers, uh, like uh, Spring frameworks, right, to something uh, smaller and modern footprints like uh, Spring Boot or Jakarta EE or, or uh, Macro Profile. 
Today, uh, more and more Java developers, they are looking for how they can migrate their existing Java application to the cloud, whether this cloud can be Azure or AWS, maybe Google Cloud. And maybe or they are trying to also uh, find out a way how to create new services from scratch, I mean cloud native services uh, on Azure. And many companies have a significant investments also migrating their critical uh, Java applications to a fully managed environment to run these applications uh, in the cloud. Why? Why cloud? You know the, all, all the answer. We're gonna, we are not going to answer this question, but here you see uh, what I. This comes maybe as a surprise for some people. Uh, why uh, Microsoft? Uh, uh, Microsoft chose Java and how it came to be Java on Azure and why not to use for other cloud vendors like AWS, right? Uh, this is the question also in my mind. Uh, I had a lot of questions uh, cycled uh, on the top of my head. And, uh, but because at that time I was totally new to Azure. I got used to uh, building, deploying in the AWS ecosystem. Uh, so. AWS and Azure have been persistent right in the market for several years and they are both uh, have taken lots of top honors for a while now. Uh, uh, but in this session we are not going to also discuss uh, which cloud vendor to choose that bothers most of us here if you are not using Azure but using uh, AWS. Maybe one of the reasons why Microsoft uh, wants to support Java because according to the recent statistics I got, Java still on the top of three programming languages among the world's top startups. I mean, new startup, they would like to choose a technological stack and their first choice, Python, yes. Second choice, Java still. Java still gains some popularity among these startups. Maybe that's why Microsoft wants to involve more Java developers into their ecosystem. Uh, let's say after taking some time, I did some small investigation, I found that Microsoft actively supports all the Java community organizations, uh, including ongoing Java programming language and GVM, and uh, Microsoft Teams directly uh, contributing to OpenGDK to support some builds, like uh, for Java 11, and maybe latest uh, version for Java 17, and also they are supporting uh, binaries for these builds on Azure. And, uh, and uh, we cannot forget about GitHub, right? Uh, it hosts millions of Java repositories, and that's also part of uh, uh, Microsoft. And also we have some uh, other uh, CI-CD uh, solutions, vulnerability scans, and uh, whatever you do, you uh, keep your code somewhere on GitHub, that means you are touching also uh, some part of um, uh, the Java project. Why? Uh, last but not least, there are more than 2 million GVMs uh, running across uh, Microsoft uh, production and services. Uh, actually, I was really uh, surprised, for example, LinkedIn uh, heavily relies on Java. And backend of Yammer, if you know what's the Yammer, also written in Java. And uh, uh, next uh, surprise comes like a Bing. Uh, this is a web search engine that also powers Microsoft's uh, start menu. Uh, on Windows start menu, when you search something on Windows menu, it's also written in Java. Uh, this is how Java is strong in Microsoft. You can also read more about these uh, tools for Java developers on this ebook. Uh, this is also recently published, very interesting. I'm going to leave this slide. Uh, and of course, we, as a Java developers, right, we love the tools we use because uh, we know the, how to achieve uh, the things faster and efficiently, just as we have shortcuts or some secrets. That there is nothing that uh, can convince us, OK, go uh, to some new tool, learn something new. Uh, and that's why Microsoft uh, Azure like, empowers every Java developers uh, to use any of these technologies you know. For example, if you're writing a code in IntelliJ, Eclipse, or VS Code, or maybe you are uh, managing your dependencies or making automation on your build with Maven or Gradle, maybe you're using JUnit for testing, right? Or maybe you're using uh, some, some other tools. Uh, you can use any tool but you can bring your applications, Java-based applications to the Azure without any problem. 
Uh, so, and over the past few years, uh, we had also uh, lots of strategic partnerships with major vendors in Java ecosystem. As you can see in this, is we have Red Hat, uh, VMware, Oracle, IBM, all these uh, partners, they're helping uh, to help the Java developers, they can build and deploy their Java application without worrying about infrastructure. Uh, so. On the next uh, surprise with uh, all the Microsoft Azure offerings. It has very diverse technologies. As you can see, if you would like to uh, bring your existing applications uh, uh, without uh, re architecting your code or maybe uh, without changing your code, you can use infrastructure as a code, right? Uh, you don't have to change anything. You can use virtual machines and deploy your Java-based application or .NET or maybe Python. And next, for example, containers. If you, are, if you have a containers, uh, something Dockerized, uh, you can bring these containers to the Azure Kubernetes service or uh, Red Hat OpenShift, it's a Red Hat project uh, jointly managed by Red Hat and Microsoft, or you can use platform as a service. Uh, here we have, for example, Azure Spring uh, App. Uh, it's now officially called Azure Spring App that uh, can ha host your uh, Java Spring Boot microservices on Azure Cloud. Yeah, here are some other options, for example, uh, let's say, you can use containers, right? As you said, for example, we have also uh, Azure container instances in addition to a Kubernetes service if you want only containers that you want to manage yourself without Kubernetes. Uh, or you would like to deploy some VARs, ER uh, builds uh, to the Azure. Also, we have this JBoss or the Tomcat server uh, running up and running for you uh, on Azure. Uh, or f very uh, diverse, uh, fully managed databases that, that are highly available, right? And uh, it has a limitless, uh, limitless scale. You can uh, use them with low latency. These are all the databases like uh, uh, SQL databases and no SQL databases in this list. And so here, now we are good to come. This was a small intro about Java and Microsoft, why Java. Uh, but you don't have to uh, create your uh, fully microservice, uh, Java-based microservice right from scratch. You can use now serverless APIs uh, with Azure Functions, maybe with AWS Lambda, uh, as you can see in this picture, uh, because there are some blocks, also some uh, like contradictions, like uh, you, you can use a uh, serverless API instead of microservices. Why? Uh, here I listed some of the things, why, why to choose serverless approach instead of microservice. Uh, maybe someone has any other opinions, feel free to kind of uh, raise your hand and maybe tell what, what else you know. Because serverless approach is a very good example, right, for even driven uh, system uh, that uh, triggers uh, depends on coming external event, right? External event can come from maybe HTTP request. Uh, that's requested through your client application, or it can come from the device, any uh, message. And then Azure Function can uh, be triggered based on this event, and Function take care of your process. Like, uh, you don't need to install anything, you can just run, uh, write a code that does your core business task, instead of uh, you don't, uh, writing like infrastructure, how this messaging should work, or uh, how this data modeling should work, as uh, Chris explained it. There are already ready solutions uh, built based on these best practices. And for example, like functions, uh, how you can develop, like you can develop functions in Java, or let's say in .NET or Python, using your IntelliJ, uh, using your IDEA, right? Eh? In this case, uh, let's say we have VS Code and IntelliJ or Eclipse, right, for Java developers. For the VS Code, uh, also in VS Code, you can write Java code now. We have some plugins, like Maven plugin, Gradle plugin. You can uh, build your Java applications and write uh, from, uh, directly from VS Code, you can deploy to Azure. Or the same as uh, from IntelliJ, they also you can do uh, in this integration with Azure. Or, and also you can uh, and then integrate uh, this existing uh, Java application with DevOps uh, using the GitHub. That's a, just remember this picture. We're going to uh, show in demo uh, how to do it quickly. Uh, so here, this is a 
simple scenario uh, we have. Uh, in this uh, scenario, as you can see, we are trying to process some stream of data, right? Uh, we have some device, uh, let's say, uh, generating some data on the left side, like Internet of Things or whatever, on the uh, left side, like some device, sending some data to us, stream of data, and then uh, even hubs registers uh, each uh, data as a new event that's uh, coming to the system, right? And then uh, this event, each event will be triggered by the Azure function. An Azure function then processes data, updates some stuff, and writes the result to the Cosmos DB. Uh, Cosmos DB is just no SQL database. It's also multi-model. Uh, you can use also, uh, you can also save in a JSON format. If something bad happens, I uh, think someone asked here the question to Chris, like uh, what happens if uh, like uh, uh, 12 hours of uh, events not processed successfully? Okay, you can put to storage queue. It's a technical solution, right? It uh, improves uh, the uh, improves a lot your uh, system. Uh, you can, if something failed in writing to the Cosmos DB or processing the event, you can process later by uh, taking from the queue. This is also another solution in the queue. So let's break uh, down each component to understand the, the role of each, let's say, uh, starting from this one function. Uh, that's just the simulator generates some telemetric data uh, about pressure and the temperature uh, that this one device is sending. Uh, and this uh, data is generates uh, say, say ten, every 10 seconds, right? It sends it to the event hub, and the same process happens. Uh, it function uh, process data and writes the Cosmos DB. And here is the interesting part is why uh, event hubs, because Azure has uh, Azure Event Hub uh, uh, service. It's a multi, uh, how to say, it's, uh, be, it, it's a capable of uh, uh, processing uh, lots of big stream of data uh, without any kind of worrying about the, how you can scale it. It's, it can be scalable automatically uh, or you can deploy it in uh, uh, multiple regions or ge geographical locations, etc. This is the event hubs and next uh, what comes here, so it's two components, Azure function, storage queue, right? Uh, th this simple scenario can, you can use not only for this uh, just simple uh, telemetric, telemetric data processing. Uh, you can take it this as a sample. You can use for your complex uh, business uh, problems, right? Uh, just remember this: even we need an event hub, Azure Function, and Cosmos DB three components. If you need additional, you can put storage queue on the top. So, and why is Cosmos DB? Why not to use a relational database? Uh, why, maybe here a question like to the audience, maybe, what is, why we use uh, NoSQL for stream processing instead of uh, SQL? You know why? Uh, maybe many of us prefer to use NoSQL databases, unstructured data. So, any? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. One of the reasons is speed, because not all uh, data uh, bases are fast enough to handle uh, the events in real time, right? Uh, some of the requirements we have for the storage, like it should be very fast non-blocking write and very fast non-blocking uh, read access. There should be, and it should be highly scalable and it should have, has, it should have a very high uh, throughput. This is uh, three or four uh, requirements. Relation database, unfortunately, cannot uh, always uh, recommend these requirements. I mean, uh, the message requirement, that's why we choose uh, uh, Cosmos DB. Uh, with the, because it's also multi-model, you can keep uh, very different type of models easily. So, and then once you have this solution uh, uh, and you are start to develop and you have uh, systems uh, that si does simple application uh, and you need to also monitor, right? And monitoring is very important because in event-driven system, it works as like fire and forget. Uh, fire and forget means you just, uh, generator of the event sends uh, event, but it doesn't care about response. Uh, w what will be the output? That's why you need to carefully, very carefully monitor your uh, even driven components. As uh, every component you need, to, you need to monitor, or also you need to monitor whole system. Uh, that's, what is the solution for that? You can use some kind of monitoring service. 
and whether it can be uh, Azure Monitor. Azure also provides uh, some capabilities uh, to monitor your event-driven system. Uh, like you can see some uh, metrics, you can measure performance, or so you can also analyze uh, some code. Uh, uh, it has lots of uh, the features, or you can collect some metrics and logs, maybe send to uh, somewhere else. Uh, yeah, it's just one solution. I mean, you can use other monitoring tools, of course, uh, not only the Azure. Uh, and here, so I'm just leaving out some uh, the QR code where you can learn more about how to monitor event processing uh, on the Microsoft documentation. It's very interesting facts there. And once you know uh, you are monitoring, uh, you are able to monitor your events, right? And next, uh, making some automation because you are changing something in your code, in function code, how to deploy it as quick as possible. One of the ways how you deploy, how you deploy using CLI, right? command line tools, or you can use uh, some uh, scripts, right? Or you can use Azure portal, go to portal or redeploy, or maybe upload some zip file. Uh, otherwise, you can use also GitHub. If uh, your source code is, uh, let's say, hosted on GitHub, you can use GitHub Actions, and uh, every change uh, that done on uh, main branch we first call called master branch, right? In main branch, it will go to directly to Azure portal. Uh, there is uh, some special plugins. I, I'm going to show like this in this process. And also, one way was using GitHub Action, how to make a build uh, and deployment automation. There are some other options also, how you can uh, automate like Terraform. You can use Terraform with Azure, uh, or you can maybe use uh, Azure pipelines from the old Azure DevOps. Right? You can also deploy uh, your Azure functions. Uh, here are the, some materials you need uh, if you would like to learn more. The, any, the interesting part, for part, I really like this. For example, you, we have just uh, some Java libraries. Uh, we call it infrastructure as a code. Uh, you can define your infrastructure in Java code. And uh, even you don't have to use GitHub. Uh, like you define how many resources you want uh, in Azure, uh, you want function, you want okay, event hub, you want uh, Cosmos DB. Uh, this Java code will do this infrastructure as a code uh, stuff. Uh, you can also check it out. Here's I provided if someone uh, created before function, uh, have you ever created function on Azure? Just uh, you only. Any, any people? How you create just maybe a follow up question? Yes, PowerShell, yeah. And uh, if you're a Java, we have also, I think on .NET also, we have these libraries. Uh, you can use this code uh, and that's all. Uh, this code will uh, always update and uh, if necessary it makes a rollout for you, uh, this simple library. In this example, as you can see, we are creating storage function uh, and uh, for the function of service plan. Three components with a simple code. It will not change. You, you, I believe you're not, you not going to change this code uh, uh, too frequently. You just write and leave it as it is. So, some other partners uh, who is uh, doing some Java things. And now we can jump into demo. Uh, I have recorded the one. I'm going to explain in uh, while it is running. Just a moment. Um, I think I can do this. Uh, here we go. Yeah, the source code uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm what I'm talking about is simple. You can find it on my GitHub repo. Uh, just to understand how uh, this uh, code things work. Uh, for example, for the some of the prerequisites you need, like you need to install Azure CLI in your instance, or I mean in your local machine or development. Like you, can, you need Maven uh, or Azure Functions tools, maybe Java Developer Kit like a GDK, uh, maybe a latest version 8, etc. And here are some setups, like uh, you can do with PowerShell. Yeah, this, is what, this one can, you can replace them later with uh, Java libraries. And this is a PowerShell uh, commands. Like, or you can run it like, from Azure CLI. It creates a resource, event hub, uh, the, some uh, Cosmos DB database. Uh, it does some connections, uh, connection strings. Uh, I, I'm just showing it like shortly here, uh, and we are what we are taking Azure Function talking to Azure Cosmos DB, right? And then talking to uh, Event Hub, 
and also talking to some of the external services, right? Three external services. We need connection strings to be uh, secure. Uh, and after this, you run the PowerShell, you see uh, some components um, already deployed. I see application insights deployed, the function app, Cosmos DB uh, on the Azure portal. So uh, if you go to Azure function, let's say, uh, at the time I stopped it because uh, I had a very limited credits, 200 US dollars. Uh, I'm, sp I'm actually using this to one year. I'm stopping all the time uh, for, uh, while I'm not demoing. Uh, this is a code, uh, source code. You see, I'm, we are using this uh, Maven plugin and Java libraries. Uh, two only libraries uh, in my form XML file uh, to use, uh, to deploy some Java applications uh, with Maven and also uh, Azure functions to write some function code. Uh, here you can see function code, three functions, like generate uh, sensor generator, process, uh, gen uh, processor of these uh, events, and the queue. Uh, it runs uh, every 10 seconds. Uh, the funny thing is everything in Java uh, written a uh, very small, small code, but it does uh, huge things, actually. And the second function, for example, process sensor data also uh, in Java with some uh, triggers. It triggers um, when something arrives to event hub or, and does some checks some pressure and temperature if it's higher than the expectation or less than expectation. And if something happens bad in writing to this uh, process data to Cosmos DB, we are putting to the queue. Uh, of course, to uh, reprocess maybe uh, after some time. Here, I, there is no logic yet, but we can improve all the time. But what about now? Uh, and this code is in VS Code, and the interesting fact also, you can also use Maven uh, or Azure uh, extensions. Lots of extensions in VS Code we have, right? I mean, not only for Java developers and also uh, some JavaScript guys, uh, they love to use VS Code. Uh, or uh, you can see also Java projects in VS Code, similar to IntelliJ. Uh, what kind of Java projects do you have? Let's try to run maybe this simple application now locally first, but this is, uh, we need uh, these connection strings, right, from Azure. Uh, now we need to bring this connection uh, uh, st string, uh, connection strings from the application settings. Uh, by running just a simple command, it will create for you a local settings file if you would like to test uh, locally uh, your code, like before, uh, let's say, pushing it to GitHub repository or whatever repository you're using. And now we can try to run it. Uh, maybe clean package, uh, we are running Java applications uh, locally. So it's a deployment pro uh, development process, right? We write the code, uh, develop some code, test it locally. If it's working, we create a branch, right? Then. Uh, so here you go. Uh, actually, it's three functions up and running, right? And this generator function is generates now uh, some events already every 10 seconds. And the processing function is processing also this telemetric data uh, every 10 seconds. Uh, and in real time, it's not like uh, something happening in order, it's in real time happening. So once we are sure that it's locally running, and now we can try to deploy it to Azure. And this is our uh, funny, uh, how to say, simple code. Uh, so I, I stop it, and there is a very uh, different ways of deploying it to Azure. I can use, uh, again, extension, uh, which this function app I would like to deploy, my three functions. Uh, you can choose from the list I want to deploy, uh, and you just confirm it, and this uh, deployment process starts. It takes some time, depends on how many uh, functions you have, or how many quotes you are deploying, right, Azure function app. Uh, and after its deployment process finished, you can just uh, go and check uh, if the functions deploy successfully. Uh, here we go. Yeah. And yeah, now it's completed finally. For me, it takes it took a how to say, uh, if I don't mistake, like uh, uh, one minute to deploy this. Yeah. Now it's uh, function start automatically. These five, three functions in place uh, on the Azure Function Hub. And also, for example, you can use, see the, it's a log saying uh, it will be deployed from VS Code directly by using the plugin or then also extension. 
Uh, and also, I can, you can, for example, create some deployment slots, not directly deploy to prod. Maybe uh, you can create some staging environment, right? Dev uh, environment by using deployment slots on Azure. And we can also see uh, now uh, Cosmos DB if some events arrive. Uh, you can see now telemetric info. Yes, we have some events uh, coming every 10 seconds. So, yep. Here we go. Uh, now, we, are maybe make sure we made sure that uh, it's working on Azure portal. Uh, so next pro step, uh, I would like to now uh, a little bit automate uh, the deployment, which is the GitHub Actions. To do so, uh, let's maybe uh, go back to VS Code. Uh, this actually, I, I also showed uh, some application insights, like which components talking to which component. You can also see in real time, like a function app is uh, writing the result to the Cosmos DB, or you can see some live metrics right on Azure. Uh, the same as for uh, Event Hub. Yeah. Or see some traces, uh, even uh, also some performance metrics on the next one. I can a little bit speed up. And there's a performance view, like how your function is pe performing. You can test it, like uh, how much time it's taking to process uh, each request. You can also see, like, how, uh, in seconds, right, to these functions is how it's processing. So this is good, and the last one is I'm going to show also now for you uh, is GitHub Actions as a, uh, the last and interesting part. Uh, let me speed up a little bit. Uh, this one. Uh, now we are trying to, yes, we have repository, right? Uh, on my repository, I would like to create GitHub Actions. First, see, I need to uh, create some uh, uh, connection between Azure portal and GitHub. To make this connection, you need to register new secret. Under GitHub Actions, you will go to secrets and register your secrets, and that's all. It's very uh, one two step uh, process. And after you, should, you need to create under your repository a GitHub uh, slash workflow folder, and your and define your steps uh, under GitHub Actions YAML file. Similar to on Jenkins, uh, you will you also define steps right in YAML file, and also in GitHub Actions. Uh, we have some, several steps. What we are doing, we are installing Windows on this instance, and we are uh, restoring some uh, dependencies. We are building dependencies, and then running Azure functions uh, on this deployed code. Yeah. So, so once we define the YAML file, right, and then if I, I do any change now, on my function, I'm just showing here, uh, you need to uh, match the secret name uh, on YAML file so that it can uh, f uh, able to find it. Let's say, let's see some one comment. Uh, I, uh, something I changed in my function. Now, if I push these changes to, uh, let's say, main branch, because I was working alone, sorry, uh, with nobody else, I can push directly to main branch. And now, actually, the workflow started automatically. This function code will be deployed now to Azure. Uh, you can see some logs on GitHub, like uh, uh, what other uh, steps we are doing. And here we go. Yeah. And after some time, uh, this uh, code changes on Azure functions will be applied on Azure portal also. Yeah. You see the logs. Uh, firstly, we did manual deployment. Now we did automatic deployment uh, to Azure uh, without any kind of extra steps. I think that's, uh, that's it for demo. Uh, I have 35 minutes spent, and now we can jump into questions. I see some people got bird because it's a very technical session. I love technical sessions. Uh, now let's maybe have a lot of questions any about Azure. Yeah, go ahead. We have 10 minutes. Uh, I can ask any question. Yeah, I can, I can hear, no worries. Okay, so I'm not very familiar with the serverless approach, but as I understand, so over here, you kind of don't have uh, like server instance, any like Docker container that's needless, right? Uh, Docker, uh, yes, you don't need to Dockerize anything because uh, you can write the code uh, like what you would like to process in this function. 
and bring without Docker, right? I mean, here, as you can see, I didn't use any Docker. Yeah. Do Docker, why we need? The first question is, like, we need uh, when we have a bigger systems that's independent and deployable, and it has additional uh, fun dependencies, right? Functions, it is, they have no any dependency. Function does only one single job, uh, and maybe it should run up to two minutes or three minutes. Uh, all right, so then you basically deploy a jar, right? Yep. Okay. And Jar. for example, Spring Boot also behind the scenes uses Tomcat, right? So you wouldn't need even that, correct? Yeah, for, for Spring Boot, this case is a little bit different. Uh, we are not using framework either, right? Uh, if you use a Spring Boot, uh, you need to use, of course, some of the uh, solutions on Azure, like uh, Azure Spring App, uh, if you're using Spring Boot microservice or the APIs. Okay. But uh, you, I mean, you cannot create. Uh, so the idea was, uh, if I, I correctly understood, uh, you were asking a function and now uh, connecting to uh, Spring R. What is uh, the different questions? I'm, I'm just curious, like, uh, what do we win by doing this approach uh, in contrast compared to, you know, the traditional uh, Dockerized solution? So I'm just thinking like, okay, what are we throwing away? What's left? What are we actually deploying yeah, over there? Good question. Now I got uh, you are throwing away infrastructure. You are not uh, taking care of infrastructure, uh, but Azure, Azure is doing infrastructure for you, management, right? Uh, in this case, you don't need uh, containers. That's one of my point. Or you manage some, uh, you don't need the Kubernetes tool to manage many functions. Functions uh, can manage Azure itself. Yeah, but you also don't need the server, even the embedded one. Yep. Okay. And, uh, okay. What about that? Uh, there was like a temperature sensor emulation. Was it like a REST API? Was it good. something else? Yeah, yeah. Good question. Um, this is a uh, yes. We function. We have this three uh, or four different triggers. Maybe more, if I don't mistake. You can make a function HTTP trigger, or you can make a function event trigger. If something event uh, comes, I think it uses a different protocol, not the HTTP protocol, maybe. And it's also you can run by schedule, like Chrome, all right? Uh, Ten seconds or every twenty seconds. Uh, we have, uh, I think, maybe more than five. And there are lots of triggers as input. Okay, and then final question. Yeah, like yeah. Come how on. much of this functionality is proprietary? Like, if we okay, we decide to go with the Azure, and then I yeah. don't know, years pass by, and uh, let's say, does Google offer this? Does IBM or any other vendor do offer similar functionality, interchangeable functionality, or is it completely Microsoft stuff? I mean, they are already. Uh, they have already. I mean, Google has already Lambda, uh, similar to AWS Lambda functions. Also. Google has also functions, uh, does a similar thing. The option is here is uh, better uh, providing uh, uh, how, what, what kind of trigger you want and what is your business pro problem. Uh, depending on business problem, you can choose uh, specific solutions. For example, if you are using already one cloud, uh, of course, you are not going to change into another cloud only for uh, reasons that you would like to use functions, right? You should have other reasons also. Uh, yeah, to make it like if you are starting and only moving migration to the Azure functions, yes, you can go with uh, functions instead of maybe Google or the AWS Lambda. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You are my favorite person. Uh, yeah, we need to have a tea with you after the event. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. I think we can hear it. If so, okay. what about auto testing those uh, functions? Uh, you mean uh, uh, testing? Unit test integration. Yes. Test. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they didn't cover in this demo. It will be very long. Uh, we have uh, actually the webinar is happening. That's all about uh, how you can test. Also, let me switch back to this. Uh, I, I was also promoting it. Uh, next to the Microsoft booth, you can go to the free Java uh, webinar. Uh, our cloud advocates are uh, going to explain how to test uh, your uh, functions, JUnit test, because you don't need integration tests, of course. Uh, you can test this with JUnit. Uh, is it not an issue? As we test it like locally, right? You can uh, write some automated tests against function. It's possible. We have, there are some libraries already. Thank you. Uh, it will be 23rd of uh, November. Uh, feel free to join. Uh, 
whoever is here uh, attending my session and even attending this event uh, got access like uh, for free because we didn't have any giveaways. I decided maybe give the audience uh, as this opportunity. Uh, like we have, I think I got today 500 tickets. I hope uh, it's still, it's, this session is still open. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. I have uh, one other question regarding the Azure Functions there, because it, it, yeah. it's sure. from a security standpoint. If you're using the consumption plan for the functions, which I'm a Microsoft MVP, so I play with that quite a lot. Um, but what can you do for the security sex? If you've got a, a consumption function, then by default it's public. Is there anything you can do to him to secure Monitor. those and lock those down? Ah, oh, good question. Uh, yeah, I think you can use uh, this. We have centralized security system uh, called Azure Active Directory, right? Uh, that role-based that you can control or you can enable any security. Uh, on the top of Azure Functions, no, not on Azure Functions for other resources. Uh, yeah, it's uh, very integratable uh, with Azure Functions, Azure Active Directory. Okay. Yeah, you can secure, for example, with certificates, uh, TLS certificates, right? Your Azure Function that nobody calls. You can even uh, use API management on the top of Azure Functions. API management can uh, enable you for your authorization, auth authentication process. Uh, not, not only Azure API management, I mean, any API management solution can do that. Okay. I hope uh, I could answer yeah, your question. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Do we have any, any more questions? Then I would like, first of all, to say thank you to Tiger for the session, for You're ending welcome. the day for thank us. You. Thank you. And don't, don't forget about this uh, webinar. And that is the end of day one. I believe there's still the hallway track coming up, so please go and speak to people. It's, uh, I'm an introvert, so I find that difficult, but if you want to come up and speak to me, I love that, and I'm sure that there's other people like that too out there. And we will see you tomorrow morning for day two. Thank you all, and have a good evening.